I'm currently freezing my butt on the corner of the Highway 20 and St. John's on the northwest corner. Right now I'm on specifically on the on-ramp that goes uh, from St. John's down to 20 westbound. And the reason why I'm here specifically is because it's around this spot right here where some 60 years ago there existed a place that this documentary is about. See, of course you'd never know that there was anything here at one point before all these on-ramps and stuff were built. There certainly was. And it was a place that was enjoyed by many young families and many teenagers living in the area for some 10 years. Not to give too much away, but this place is actually a place that I've referred to as Point Claire's or the Lakeshore or the West Island's most endangered story. It's also been my biggest muse to create every video on this channel and all the interviews that I've done. So sit back and relax. This Sunday night's With Endangered Stories featuring Saving the Point Claire Milk Bar. So this is the picture. This is the picture that really, really set me on my quest, my four year quest. This is a picture of John Rennie students on St. John's Boulevard walking southbound. It looks like it's midday. The shadows are very short. They're wearing uniforms. Um, so the main question was, is where were they going? I found this picture in a phase of my life when I was sort of dabbling into the romance of the West Island and of Point Claire. I was actually researching something else and then I found this picture. And so I started asking around on where kids went at lunchtime. I know as John Rennie students, they usually went to the Point Claire Shopping Center as it was known at the time. However, the Point Claire Shopping Center in this picture is behind them. They just walked over the railroad tracks. In my lifetime, you've never been able to do this. There's always been an overpass. I thought that I knew quite a bit about the West Island, uh, but not knowing where these kids are going, it sort of humbled me and it humbled me in my knowledge of the West Island. So of course I became curious. So naturally I, I asked around if anybody knew anyone who would have been a John Rennie student in those years. Someone had suggested um, a member of Point Claire community who did go to John Rennie and in fact lived in Point Claire in those years. Action. And I had asked him, I said, did you ever go down past the shops to a mysterious place and he says, oh, they may have been going to the old Point Claire milk bar. There was no overpass. This was the hill and the road went straight across the railway tracks. And then they would cross over, the milk bar would be over here. That would be the only place that they'd be going? That's the only place they the would be bar. going. What, what's the Point Claire milk bar? So I asked around again and, and someone mentioned that they thought that they had seen a picture of it on Facebook of this mysterious milk bar. So sure enough, I went on Facebook and it actually wasn't too hard to find. And so this is it, the Point Claire milk bar. I mean, I thought that it was going to be an incredible find and you know who's known about this place except for the kids in that picture but funny enough many people knew about the milk bar and many people commented on this picture. I walked the train tracks often to uh, 
the milk bar. Oh yeah, we used to go there all the time. Oh yes, we went to the milk bar often. I remember being taken there by my parents. You go up to the milk bar and hang out. Say pre-teens, 12, 13, that was the only place. It was the sort of the start of kids having a place to hang out. Favorite as a kid, it was at the level crossing of St. John's in the 2 and 20. Oh yes, favorite place to go with our family. I couldn't believe that something that would generate so many comments on Facebook with what looked like one generation of kids would be so unknown to me. Now, of course, I did have to ask the question, <laughs> what is a milk bar? It was a milk bar, uh, ice cream and, you know, milk products. It was a very popular spot. This was an ice cream place. This was like Dairy Queen. And this existed at a time when all of these baby boomers were all very young, in the 50s. Now the combination of the kids and all these comments and also where it was located proved to me that I knew nothing about not only this place, but the era and the time that it lived in. And what happens when you don't have much information about something is that I filled in the information with a very wild imagination. <laughs> with what I thought was the reference point of the 1950s. It was the golden age of suburbia and commerce and everything was great and golden and nostalgia and the music and everything just seemed perfect. And the milk bar to me opened up that opportunity for that kind of world to have been right here in the West Island. And that got me very, very excited. I remember what it did for my family was it gave us a collective reason to be together and to do something together that was uplifting for everyone. And it became a bit of a mission of mine to discover all that I could about it. Because until that point, I hadn't considered any other time before my own in the West Island, let alone the 1950s. You asked me what was one word you thought of it, and I said sanctuary. Because I took the bus so often, and because when the winds blew and it was really cold, I could either stand on the west side of it or the south side of it to get out of the wind. It has a special meaning to me because it kept me warmer in the winter. To see the architecture of this place, first of all, it stands out. That's the first thing I thought of. I had never seen anything built to look this way in the West Island. And I know now, after doing a lot of research, that the city did want a high class standard for this new building. And indeed, I believe that it met its mark. I've even found the ad for the company who, <laughs> who designed the awnings. I don't know how I caught it, but indeed right there is the Point Clear Milk Bar. This building was such a beacon that I found a bunch of advertisements that used it to help for directions into this unknown world of the West Island, or the lakeshore it was known in those days. Turn north off Metropolitan Boulevard beside the Milk Bar. <laughs> Past the Point Claire Milk Bar and cross the railways at Cedar Park Station. All of these advertisements that are mentioning the milk bar are not from the local newspaper. These are from the Gazette. So this tells me that it was well known across the island, but this was still very broad. I still didn't learn that much about the milk bar, except for the fact that there was a building there that was called the milk bar. So that's when I started digging into the local newspaper and that put the milk bar on a deistic type level for me. It just consumed me. Now, the local advertisements told me that this place was big enough to be able to pay to produce these things. I mean, these were pieces of art and the drawings and graphics that were used and the fonts just added to this 1950s fantasy world that was being created in my head. This turned my interest in the milk bar into just a full-on obsession. My brother, that was his very first job, was at the milk bar. And on Sundays, he was allowed to eat anything he wanted. It was free. 
But apparently that lasted a week and then you can't stand ice cream to this day. While looking through the advertisements, I did find the now open advertisement. The new Point Claire Milk Bar, corner St. John's Road and Metropolitan Boulevard. Opened in 1950. And in that same issue as the opening day flyer, you get the opening day article. Milk Bar opened to populace on Saturday last. So the article says it opened on a Saturday in September of 1950. About 150 people showed up and between 2 o'clock and 4 p.m. there was free ice cream for children. My recollection it was open long hours, seven days a week. That's what made it a little different. And who had this idea to build this milk bar was a local entrepreneur named William Legault. Legault, that's right, because this house is still down on the Lakeshore Road. You knew Bill Legault personally? Yeah, I worked for the city of Point Clair at that time. He wasn't just an entrepreneur in the community, he was active in the community as a resident of Point Clair. He was past president of the curling club, he was president of the Victorian Order of nurses, which is why I believe this picture was in the newspaper. See, Mr. Legault wasn't just an ice cream man, but he was an all round dairy man. He owned the Point Claire farm. And how I know that is because at the end of that first season of the milk bar, he did a joint Christmas greeting with the Point Claire farm. My name is Andre Lalonde. I work for Monsieur Legault at the ice cream, uh, what do you want to call it, store? I don't remember the name it was on. <laughs> I think it was Lego, Lego ice cream. I mean, not only are these advertisements just well decorated and beautiful, but they give a lot of information that you'd otherwise think didn't exist. And as I began to eventually talk to people, the ads would help add credibility to the testimonials I was receiving about the milk bar. The big decision was, a sugar cone or a waffle cone. Waffle cone was more money, but uh, it was worth the 15 cents. And the challenge is, you know, you'd look at the board and see what kind of ice creams, what kind do I want today? Well, I'd like some of everything, you know, but they didn't, you had to choose. For example, in a lot of these advertisements, they named every single flavor they had. My most favorite was butterscotch ripple. Maple walnut. I remember it just being superb. Vanilla, butterscotch, uh, chocolate. Uh. Strawberry. Vanilla. Oh, uh, maple walnut, I suppose. <laughs> but also that it wasn't opened all year round. See, the grand reopening. Spring must be here. The Point Claire Milk Bar is open. And lastly, the milk bar was obviously doing well for itself because by 1954, they had added a brand new counter. A new counter merchandiser has now been installed. Up until that time, you bought ice cream like a brick of butter, okay, in a brick form. We never saw ice cream in gallon containers. So with the information that I had received from these advertisements, plus the conversations that I had with people, I felt that it was finally time in 2019 to tell the story of the milk bar. So I came into 2019 excited to create a documentary about what I knew about the milk bar, which wasn't that much. So to be able to fill in those gaps and to really understand how important this was to the era that it lived in, I needed to research the milk bar's world. Now, based on the year and location that the milk bar was built, it told me that it was the only commercial establishment that wasn't in a commercialized zone. This was all by itself, so it served multiple zones of Point Claire at that time. Cedar Park Heights, The Village, Lakeside Heights, Lakeside, and Dawa. We would ride our bikes up Cedar Avenue, and the tunnel still there underneath the 20, and that was roughly where the milk bar was. Just walk over, we're not that far. If somebody had a car, we would go always stop there for an ice cream cone. We walked there. 
We walked everywhere. So with the documentary in mind, I knew that I had to start with the milk bar in the 1950s and try to learn as much as I could about that decade here in Point Claire. The information was incredible. This little airplane monument, for example. St. John's was not where St. John's was supposed to be. Well, the Maple's Inn didn't just cater to the younger baby boomers, which I found incredibly interesting because I was learning stuff about the veterans and when they came. So World War to settle here in Point Claire. Our bay was the quintessential place and I'm thinking, what is going on here with this information? Let's keep digging. The Valwa Country Club for the Valwa Citizens Association. I, I, I kept going further back. And then I was in the 1700s. We had farms. Here Where were the farms. How extensive were the farms? Then you're in the seignorial system. And that brought me back to the 1600s. I'm learning about the windmill. And, and all this was incredibly interesting. And it was all amazing information. And I thought, now this is one heck of a world built around the milk bar. <laughs> And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we ended this huge long story and it was all for the Point Claire Milk Bar. It was all so that these kids can cross the track and go for ice cream at the Point Claire Milk Bar. In my head, it seemed very nice and very possible. So we took all the information, the 400 years of information, and we wrote a script and we recorded a narration. Okay. It's all gonna lead here, where these kids were going. So this picture is the first attempt at recording the narration for the Milk Bar video. And that's, that's 2019. I think I had one gray hair at the time. I was on a green screen because I wanted all the maps and aerial shots and the shots of buildings and everything to kind of be behind me. I wanted to be in ancient Point Claire. <laughs> but it proved to be a little more overwhelming than I had anticipated. After I recorded it, I realized it was too much information to cram in one five to 10 minute long episode. So I tried again later on that year. This time, I thought, let's make it more fun. Let's make it more visually fun. And if we go back about 250 years, this whole area was just farmland. It was all underdeveloped. So we went to Valwa Bay and we turned on the cameras at three o'clock in the fall and started recording. And before we knew it, it was pitch black outside. <laughs> so that same night, I came back to the studio set up our old friend, the green screen, again, and shot the entire narration again for the third time. None of these narrations worked because I was 400 years away from the milk bar. It was too daunting of a task. It was way too daunting of a task. So I stopped and put it aside for two years. But that's not to say that I wasn't still interested in the subject. Oh, I was. I just wasn't gonna produce a video about it, but I still wanted to talk about it. So I spent 2020 and 2021 speaking to as many people as I could, still doing research and still doing interviews. So by the end of 2021, I said, what am I gonna do with all this? Now I have even more information what, I'm gonna make an even longer milk bar video? And that's when I decided to say, I think it's time that I need to start releasing this stuff in shorter segments, often. And that's when I came up with Endangered Stories. So I told myself that if you're gonna do this, you're not gonna fail like you did last time or give up. So for the entire year of 2022, with the information that I had accumulated, I produced one short story every week. Most of these stories were about everything that would have been in that original Milk Bar video. They're talking about Valwa Bay Heights. But what if you were of high school age living in this area? What happened to this structure? During the Endangered Stories series, the Milk Bar was always in the back of my mind. So every time I interviewed someone, I would always ask, 
Did you remember the milk bar? And I would show a picture of the milk bar. Oh, that's the milk bar. Oh, yeah, the milk bar. That was it, the milk bar. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, damn, I know. The milk bar. Oh, God. Oh, the milk bar. Yes, I remember that. Yes, yeah, that's really sentimental. That's really beautiful. And so it started to reignite my passion in the story of the milk bar and, and that I have to tell this story however it's going to be told. But this time I was going to do it a little differently. This time I wanted information that was specific to the milk bar. Answer questions I didn't know yet, such as why it opened and how it closed. Now what I would have never assumed in the story of the milk bar is that it would have a rough start. The thing almost didn't get built. That took a lot of political courage to build anything on the highway. The milk bar was built at a time when the concept of suburbia was still a very new thing. So much so that when our friend Mr. Legault decided to build a milk bar on the corner of St. John's and the 20, some local residents weren't too keen on the idea. They did not want, as they said, a DeCary Boulevard in their backyard. But the city did feel that if this wasn't built, then something would eventually be built in that spot. So indeed, it did get built in September of 1950. The milk bar was based on that traffic along Highway 2. To build something on the 20 highway and expect people to stop there and buy an ice cream cone, Ridiculous, except it worked. Mr. Legault had a vision with the milk bar. It wasn't just to serve the Point Claire community. He wanted to benefit from the traffic that was on the highway. It was a brand new concept. Oh, it was serving them, the, the mobile population, but it surely serviced Point Claire as well, because all the people in Point Claire went to buy their ice cream at Legault. However, the reason for him to build the milk bar ended up being its demise. So this brings us back to this original picture of these John Rennie High School kids walking over the track. However, not so much actually about the picture itself, but more so about the caption that was written underneath the picture that I didn't even pay that much attention to when I first saw the picture. Crossing hazard. Ever-increasing traffic, use of the crossing by students from John Rennie High School and the imminent opening of a new shopping center has made the St. John's Road crossing the most dangerous on the lakeshore. Now coming back to this picture and the caption underneath the picture made me reflect on that research that I originally did and remember how many accidents there were. You couldn't go past two weeks without seeing a new car accident that happened locally on the highway, on the tracks, at the corner of St. John's and the 20. The first phone call, the first call I got for a, an accident was somebody got hit by a train. The number of people who lost their parents to those uh, trains, it's it's so dangerous. At the time, it was a level crossing, and which meant that cars went straight over the tracks and straight over the highway. So it makes sense why there was so many accidents at this specific location. The other thing about the milk bar is that it existed in Point Claire's highest growth decade. It just says it in the stats. 1951, only one year after the milk bar was built, you got 8,753 residents. And near the end, you've got 22,700 and nine residents who live in Point Claire. So what they had had for decades being just a level crossing over the tracks and this new highway just wasn't gonna cut it anymore. That's for sure. The crossing at St. John's Road is, in its present state, unsatisfactory, hazardous, and totally inadequate. Mayor Urquhart reminds the commission that a shopping center of 22 stores is located in the immediate vicinity, as well as a high school accommodating 1,000 students, an elementary school accommodating 500 pupils, not to mention a police and fire station headquarters, a civic center, a YMCA, and a new Catholic high school are all in the imminent future of 1958. Now, 
The milk bar certainly does teach you <laughs> about the growth of Point Claire and when that growth did happen because the milk bar was created because of the growth and definitely its demise is because of that same growth. Fascinating. When they decided they were going to build the overpass at St. John's Road, they expropriated all that land. So obviously, the overpass was built. And slowly but surely, I started to see more and more articles about the building of the overpass. There were drawings on the plans that it was going to be a, a cloverleaf style intersection and overpass. There was pictures of construction, but nowhere did I see any articles or petitions to try to save the milk bar. Not even a, we're building on the land that the milk bar once stood, or a Point Claire says goodbye to the Point Claire milk bar. There was nothing. It just stopped. I wasn't quite sure how to feel about it because although I know that the overpass had to happen, I don't know, I, I just thought that there would be at least one article about, about in the last 10 years, all these kids that had come to Point Claire had enjoyed this one location or the idea of, of building something on the 20 was so revolutionary and, and Bill Legault and thank you, Bill. And also it probably would have helped to give closure to this journey that I've been on for four years my own research, a possible documentary. Did I over-exaggerate this whole story to a point where I can't even end it? I mean, they mentioned the closing of almost every other thing that I had researched from the Country Club to the Maples Inn, but there was nothing about the milk bar. So I, I don't even know when exactly it was torn down. Do you remember when they were building the overpass? It sort of disrupted everything, but it didn't seem to take them that long to build it. They really, they built it pretty quick. I mean, every time I go by it, I think of the milk bar. Yeah, right there. Right through, the right through the milk, middle of the milk bar. <laughs> this is an advertisement from 1957. It's the last advertisement that I was able to find advertising the milk bar. It looked like it was doing fine, uh, there's tons of flavors of ice cream, um, but I'm assuming that it was torn down because of the overpass. I can't confirm it though, because there's no article saying that that's the case. Why didn't they advertise in 1958 or 1959? I don't know. So I'm left with a lot of unanswered questions. I realize that. And I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with the fact that I might not be able to find all the answers about the milk bar. The curiosity really drew the passion that I had about always wanting to ask more questions about the milk bar. So I'm leaving it that way. I'm leaving it with unanswered questions. Because as long as there's unanswered questions, then there's space to learn. And as long as there's space to learn, there's space to fill that in with imagination. Because in my head, I want the milk bar to stay like this. And as for the documentary being completed, well, as long as there's unanswered questions, then the Point Claire milk bar will always be Point Claire's most endangered story. <laughs>